On today's installment, we'll be talking about the club soda capture or maybe the bread loaf brutalizer. That doesn't make sense to you right now, and it shouldn't, but it will once you watch this video. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. All right, y'all, it's a soup and sandwich kind of day. Super simple ingredients. We're not making this food from scratch. We're pouring it in here. Really, the cooking aspect of this isn't really cooking. We're building a sandwich, but it's my favorite sandwich. We've seen it before. We'll see it again. But, you know, I just like the beauty of watching something be built, poured, cheesed, hot, things like this. Anyways, I rock with Campbell's broccoli, cheddar, of course. Of course, Hellman's, has to be Hellman's. Fresh cracked pepper. We got some wheat thins to toss in the soup later more marble cheese on top of the soup because who has a broccoli soup without extra cheese only psychopaths now real nice thin slice turkey some of the greatest pickles ever we'll explain those perfectly picked iceberg lettuce and then a ziploc freezer bag sack of artisan style bread now here's the thing you're gonna say why do you have a Ziploc bag of bread. Well, that's because I put the other half in the freezer because I can't eat a whole loaf of bread in the matter of before it goes bad, you know what I mean? But we're gonna talk about people who do eat whole loaves of bread back to back and they might be neighborhood serial killers undetected and undiscovered. And we're gonna talk about that in today's video. Okay, so let's just build this sandwich, pour some soup and really give this sandwich the love and attention it deserves, okay? All right, so we're gonna do two sandwiches on this bread. It's like a white artisan style bread. It is fresh baked in my city daily. It is amazing. It's called from, it's from a place called Five Star Bakery. I'm doing a mid toast, not a super crunchy, but not a fresh either, a mid toast. All right, now pouring soup into a bowl is not a skilled trade, we know this, but maybe, you know, a little kitchen hacks, always use your spatula. Get what you paid for in today's day and age, you know what I mean? This is a $4.50 can of soup, so we might as well get everything it's worth. And that even includes, that even includes the very tippy top of the lid, right? That's a whole spoonful right there, okay? Learning to be economical. Then of course, I'm just gonna top it with some extra cheese. Of course, we're just gonna pop this in the microwave. We're not doing a stove top heating. This is gonna be a couple minutes. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, done. All right, now you'll know that some people are okay with having heinous, dirty, disgusting, splattered microwaves. I ain't one of them, okay? Now, there's a reason why mine is so clean. A, I keep it clean because I like it to look as fresh as the day that I bought it because dirty microwaves are gross, but also here's what you do. And here's, this is called preventative measures. Just buy one of these. That's a dollar to a dollar fifty at the dollar store. You literally just cover everything. It's like a cloche for the microwave. It's a microwave cloche. You put your plastic cloche on, you microwave with it. Anything that spatters and pops, you just rinse it off real quick right after. And then you have a clean microwave, literally all the time. All right, our medium toast is ready. So just gold and brown on one side. Other side is still pretty much white, right? We're just kissing it. We're just kissing the flame. All right, so we pull up with Hellman's, the best mayo ever. We rock it on the back of the spoon, right? Because that's how you spread a proper mayo, is with the back of a spoon. Don't worry about a knife. Don't worry about scooping with the inside of the spoon. You scoop it with the back of the spoon. You got all the control in the world. Then what you do is you fresh crack pepper that mayo. This is gonna be the side that your tongue enters into from first when you bite. You're gonna have the mayo, you're gonna hit the pepper, and then we're gonna come into beautifully folded turkey slices, of course, because you must get that stacked effect, right? So a few of them rolled and then a few of them flat, just so we cover our bases. Okay, then, then we come in with some of the best pickles ever that I sourced from Mr. Sub directly. A submarine sandwich chain that sells whole big kosher dills that I sliced off in the mandolin to make perfect, of course. Zip that out, got a mayo this side, right? The more mayo, the merrier, in my humble opinion. You only pepper the one side though. Don't get cocky with the pepper. You only need just the one side. Now you get the nice crispy parts of the iceberg, the almost white or light green. That's where all the crunch factor lies. You lay yourself a nice bed of lettuce, slide this baby back, and then you just close the case. 
pat it down as you should and you rip a beautiful diagonally cut for this sandwich cross section. And this is what you're left with. And this is what you're left with, the most beautifully simple turkey sandwich. And we can and we will go ahead and stake our clam that this turkey sandwich is, is ours, okay? All right, so here's the whole show. The cheesy topped canned soup, right? And two beautifully stacked mayo, lettuce, turkey, pickle, mild toast sandwiches with our wheat thins for crushing and dipping into the soup. And let's not forget, we must incorporate the cheese in to melt, right? We need that melty cheese. So let's get into this beautiful fall meal and tell you about my potential neighborhood hidden serial murder killer that I've seen since a child, but then saw some weird behavior out of him earlier this week. And we'll talk about it. I'll show you some proof. All right, y'all, you saw it come together. Very simple, right? I'm not trying to flex any sort of cooking skills here. I just want to show you how I do my favorite turkey sandwich. Now, before we get into anything else, I am gonna dedicate the sandwich to a channel called Pagealicious. If you're watching, I know that this is probably really in your wheelhouse and uh, it is in mine. This is probably top five favorite sandwiches for me. I like, I like them simple. I do like them simple. Okay, also just, I, I'm sure I've told you this before, but if you've never had a multi-grain wheat thin, it is crack cocaine in cracker form, right? They are literally the most buttery, salty, best textured cracker on the market. And what they're amazing for is doing this, right here. Pulling structurally sound, heavy soup, creamy soup, cheesy bites up one by one and just holding it there and having the, stock, the structural integrity to hold up to the soup, right? Because that's what you want in a good soup cracker, is that structural integrity. So, let's take a bite of soup, we'll take a bite of sandwich, and I'll get into this little story here, and some of you are probably gonna feel a type of way about me taking some candid, unbeknownst to him, photographs of this man in public in the grocery store line um, but that being said if you're in public you're allowed to take video and photos of really anything and everybody so i really mean no harm and i ultimately took the photos just to send to my sisters to be like do you remember this guy from our childhood okay so i need a bite of the sandwich and then we get into the tails and the, the photos that I will put up. I'll be putting them up here and you can have a look for yourself. Here it is, the most perfect turkey sandwich ever, right? And then what you do is you bring yourself just a little extra mayo just to dip the tip, just for the corner. And then you bite it how, like I said, you gotta go, you bite it so that your mouth is hitting the turkey first. your tongue rather. This next bite will be the, the quintessential ultimate bite. Oh my God. That's the absolutely most perfect sandwich. Because nothing is doing too much. Everything is doing exactly as it's instructed to. The pepper's there. The turkey is prevalent. The pickles just give you that little kosher juicing. You got the crisp, fresh lettuce. Light little crunch on the bread. Mm. 
it's literally perfect. So good. That's the big old icy water today. All right, let's crack a few of these, do a little sprinkle, and tell you this little tale here, okay? So, as a child, there's a grocery store in my local area. It was called Quality Market. Now it's called Renko Foods. It's still exactly kind of like it was back in the day. Like, it's very retro grocery store. It has the Lazy Susan turnstiles uh, that are out of order. They don't even work. You have to slide your groceries forward. They still got like a bag boy kind of deal, right? There's no automated teller checkout machines, nothing like that. It's classic. It's old school. But it's right by my house. And they have the best meat in town for fresh meat, ground meat, all that stuff, and deli meat. That's where I got this turkey. So I go there specifically for that. Now, I'm in there the other day. And I see a guy from my old neighborhood who we always thought was super creepy. Because he looks super creepy. I'll put him up here. Yeah. Yeah. And what you're seeing is correct. He wears Dahmer frames. He has the Dahmer frames, okay? So that's not helping your case. You immediately look like a murderer or a pedophile. On top of that, he wears, you'll see it here, a Michael Myers mechanics murderer suit, yes, with his chest hair popping out, right? It's not fully zipped. The ankles on said suit float, doesn't help your case. Anybody with pants floating, ankles showing like that, that aren't intentionally rolled up like how I do, that lends to murderous activities. And then he wears bar flex, which are Velcro shoes. Now, here's the thing. This isn't a new outfit. This is an outfit that he's worn so before I was born, I assume, because ever since I've ever seen him walking in the neighborhood, this is what he's been wearing. And he's still wearing it decades later. So he never changes his outfit, basically what I'm saying. He's, he's got a closet full of jumpers and he probably buys Barflex in bulk like he buys his chained up slave food in bulk. And if I can put a picture of it here, this is where I'll put a picture of it. And that's what got me thinking, okay, I've always thought this guy was creepy. So I want to snap a few pics of him just to see if my siblings remember. So my stepbrothers and my sisters and just crack some jokes. Just be like, do you remember this guy from the neighborhood? Do you remember him walking around wearing the same thing 20 years ago? To which they responded, yes, I do remember him. He's always been creepy. Okay, cool. Now I'm going full Shia LaBeouf in my head. It's Disturbia, right? I'm like, this guy is strange. Now I look at what he bought in the store. He's got a singular loaf of bread and six liters of... Club Soda. What a bite. I think to myself, the pepper hit me perfect. Sorry. I think to myself, I go, that's either you're very struggling money wise, food. You're dieting, you're on a club soda and bread diet, which is highly unlikely because bread's usually not in any diets, or that's chained up victim food. All right.
because you look like the kind of guy who has chained up victims. So I take some more snaps, close up on the cash. He's paying with cash, right? So cash, a little less trail. He's got the chained up victim food. He's got the outfit. So I have this whole series of disturbia jokes in my head. I send these pictures to my sisters. We have a good laugh, whatever. Everything's over. I'm really not taking it that seriously. It's just kind of a funny little anecdote, right? So I go back to the store the next day around the same time. I don't know. I had to get a few ingredients for something I was making. Probably for YouTube. It was for YouTube. I remember the video still hasn't released yet, but it will. So, subscriber sponsored request. So, anyways, I'm in there. I'm scooting around. Club Soda Capture or Bread Loaf Brut Brutalizer. <laughs> I tried to say Bread Loaf Brutalizer walks in again. And this time, we lock eyes. He gave me an unpleasant vibe. So cruising around the store, da -da, kind of waiting for him to do his thing. But what he does, it shows up at the till. I get there in line just before he does. So there's just one till working. He, because it's not new technology place, it's old school. Like this is why we laid that out. And he's behind me, <laughs> like a couple spots. And he has another six liters of club soda and a loaf of bread. So now I'm actually kind of convinced about my theory, right? In this moment, I'm like, you can't consume. I mean, you can consume, but who consumes? An entire loaf of bread and six liters of carbonated soda in, in a, a under a 24 hour period. To me, it seems like a physically demanding task and extremely unreasonable. I would be bloated beyond believe so now i'm like damn this dude really do have slaves like he really this guy really do be having captured kids victims like i don't know <laughs> so i go to my truck after waiting in the parking lot waiting for him to pay and come out and i'm like should i case this gentleman just should i just kind of see where he ends up what his place is kind of looking like because i've never known where he lived i've always just seen him out walking around seems like a quiet dude low profile keeps to himself that type of shit i decide against it I had shit on the go at home. I'm like, I gotta sh go shoot this video. I got shit to do. I don't have the time for this. Also, do I really want to be the guy who cases a guy? Like, am I really that guy? Like, are my suspicions even justified? So, I didn't encroach on like his further civil rights other than snapping a few votes, but I feel like those are allowed because we're in public. <laughs> And um, now I kind of expl explained my theory to a few people because I told them, like, I, I'm like, oh, shit, I saw him the next day getting the same grocery in the 24-hour period. And people are like, yeah, that is weird. So 
So now, if I see him again getting the same groceries, I feel as if I have a civic duty to case the club soda killer, you know? I at least see, like, are all his curtains drawn? Does he have shit boarded up? Like, you know? Let's just do his deal for real. Though I have not seen him since. But I know he's lurking in the bread shadows. And part of me would not be surprised, honestly, if this guy, he just fits the bill. And I could totally see it now, like the headlines, just like. Abductees found from 1985 in the small town of Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. With a bright loaf brutalizer. Had victims chained up in his sex dungeon where he would feed them club soda and fresh bread loaves every day. Keep them alive. I also especially felt this way because I literally just finished watching the uh, Netflix movie. I think it's called Abducted. I just talked about it before that on a different video about Cleveland abduction. About Amanda Berry and uh, two other girls, their names are escaping me now. But you know, I was just, my mind was on that frequency after having watched that shit. And this guy's always giving me a weird vibe from the whole time I've ever, you know observed him or witnessed him in my life. <sighs> Sometimes ice water really is just the best medicine. Hit it from the back one time. Mm. All right, so is this absurd of me? To consider a stakeout? Is there a cause for concern? <laughs> or should I just let the man be and eat his bread loaves and drink his club soda in peace? What say ye? Let me know down below. As you can tell, I'm struggling. I'm full. But I've come this far. And it's been so delicious. The gullet's giving me grief. A lot of alliteration in today's video, I've noticed. Just quick fire with them today.
Oh, man. This is a meal for the books, though. Easily a top favorite meal of mine. Can't beat anything. Every component of it's amazing. Cheesy creamy broccoli soup. My, one of my favorites. Multigrain. <laughs> Multigrain. Multigrain wheat thins I'm literally addicted to. I can tell you that right now. I buy them every single time I go shopping. And they're always on sale like two for five. So they're dope. And those circuit sandwiches. It's literally one of the best sandwiches you could ever make. Just the simplicity of it. But it has to be... Also, that's another thing that's crucial. It has to be the right pickle. Don't be messing around with these certain pickles. Like, you have to have that, like, kosher-style pickle that's still, like, white inside, kind of, you know? Very, like, light. None of these dark, too-soaked-from-the-brine type pickles. None of that. Kosher dill. All day, every day. Okay. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down below what you think. Till the next one, eat good, live well. Don't get murdered by your neighborhood killer. I hope he doesn't watch mukbangs. And uh, stay true.